Ale všetci mu tiež kaučo vechvatné. No? Pať tu je bela dve eňkom, tu fatla kaučo vech. Tu fatla vech kofati so? Je, je v posvanu. Vo si menša vás v postom, on to si, a daj v posti si v húchbe, ale ten môže katrú. Môže za fang môj len. Pán Dafe, e kan nisi je hudy v posti si, koje kaž ňo by si. A fa melbe, kaž ma pajte lera. When I was young, my grandfather and my dad and my uncles used to come from sea and I was like 12 years old. Then I used to want to know what they caught, what type of fish it is and everything. Then my granny he used to take it out of there, put it in the zinc and then my granny used to fry it for all of us. Because we were all like in one, one household. It was amazing to see all these things just happening there. Yes, my father was a fisherman, all my brothers were fishermen, but not my son, I only had one son. My wife didn't allow him. When, when I was saved in my, in my teens, you know, each and everybody, they were one. They stayed together. But now, most of them go away, some of them died. Uh, they're not the same. Those people, they come to them, uh, uh, they're not the same. We didn't have a lot of food on the table and so. Then my mom, she and another lady, used to go to the rocks to go get the small pelamuns off. And we used to have that. Whatever you need at the fish, she makes something decent. It was so amazing to see from nothing to something. I think the reason why many people stop supporting local fishermen is that there's been for a long time in South Africa this negative connotation around who are small-scale fishers, what they do, what the activities are. In a lot of these communities, there are really great people and amazing people that are very conscious about what they are doing. They actually want to seek out new opportunities for themselves. They want to improve the lives of their families. And that narrative that I've just spoken about is not actually painted so much, you know, to the general world. And that's why fishers are very much perceived as, you know, bad guys or poachers or the negatives in society. And it's not actually the case. My great-grandfather, not my great-grandfather, but my grandfather, he used to do uh, work, the most successful fish here with the open boat, with the, with the oars. With the oars, with the sail on. Oars in missile for something in the night. Sail bit, couple years. Sit by say out. Then, snook. No fang the men so I suppose. And the fang the snook. They only get snook. At the time where small scale fisheries policy is being implemented, you have to deal with criminal syndicates, you have to deal with gangs, you have to deal with the high unemployment, you have to deal with poverty, and you also have to deal with industrial inshore fishing companies that are depleting the resource. So what is then left for small-scale fisheries? It's not a lot of fish around now lately, I suppose because of the big trawlers that's around. The livelihood for us is not so wonderful like it used to be in the, in the early years. There used to be hundreds and hundreds of snooks here on the harbour. But nowadays it's like 10 snook, 20 snook, not even 100 snook for the day. I mean, that's, that's bad. This used to get hundreds and hundreds of snook. 90% of the continent's fishing activity is small scale. And the majority of the people who are on the shore base are women that are either selling, drying or salting the fish activities. There's a big incentive for governments of the African continent to formalise the rights of small-scale fisheries. If the fishermen don't go to sea, the walkers don't get fish, the cleaners don't earn money. So it's like a chain reaction. We're actually surviving from them catching fish. So we're hoping and praying every day they'll catch something decent for us to, to sell here on the market. The difficulty is that they haven't got license. They haven't got license to take their mind. 
we only get for get for crevices and the crevices you can catch it in a month two months in three months now if you the ground catch your fish in for a for a season where it was what is open for the crevices then the department say i'm going to give you 14 days but as you know if it's going to be bad weather or calm weather you give me 14 days the more the wind is blowing and make with the blowing a whole week and now it's only a five six days like that I must get the fish out in the kitchen what they know about fish is dangerous in coastal communities there is a illegal market that supply the local market of Cape Town for crayfish and this uh, illegal market is often linked to crime in the form of gangs that are partly part of, of the system and you will find that over a period of 30 years the community are involved in these illegal activities and many of these illegal activities are linked to criminal activities and you will find that people are making livelihoods or they are criminalized based on the law that are not allowing them to access the resource in the area that they are living. What uh, one fish has done is that he applied to the national department, you know, to get a small scale fishing right. And he was unsuccessful because he needed to prove about 10 years history in the fishing sector. So many a time, like fishermen, they don't have like hardcore data of their own. So what this fish had done is because he's been logging for about two or three years, you know, consistently, when he was unsuccessful, we've given him his data and he took that to the department and he went to go and argue his case. And he said, here's my expenses, here's my income that I've generated. And the department, they basically looked at it and they've recognized it. This project has actually given dignity and respect back to fishers.